All right, part one of part two series. Yankees, Aaron Judge. Things are going to start picking up real soon. So the focus today is going to be three players to target and three to avoid if Aaron Judge re-signs with the Yankees, okay? And then the next video is going to be three players to target and avoid if he walks away from the Yankees. It's going to be different, right? You can already, I can already hear some excuses from some folks in, in the franchise saying if they re-sign him, then, well, we have to be stingy everywhere else because we say we signed him to a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. Like, keep in mind, like, they're already swimming in money. They make over $20 million every postseason game in profits, in additional profits. So... They are not hurting at all. And everybody knows they have multiple holes that need to be filled. One of which is Aaron Judge. Okay, he's beloved here. He's been he's the franchise player. So, you know, people want him back, obviously, but at the same time, this is his chance to cash in on free agency. So one way or another they're gonna have to do something here. But, you know, with that in mind, these are the three players I wanna target, I think would be a good idea to target and then avoid too, with these certain parameters in play. Okay, because we just we just don't know what the Yankees are gonna do right now. And every day, you know, I get a little bit less confident. Like, I'm already under the assumption that he has one foot out the door, okay? But I hope I'm wrong, but we'll see, right? So the first guy, well, the first one is a reliever, and I'm giving you three, 1A, 1B, 1C. Rafael Montero, Gregory Soto, David Bednar, okay? Bednar's a power reliever, a closer for the Pirates. He's not a free agent until 2027. Gregory Soto's a closer for the Tigers, not a free agent until 2026. And Rafael Montero is actually the setup man for the Houston Astros, behind Ryan Presley, and he is going to be a free agent at the end of the season. He's a power arm. He throws 96 miles an hour. On the average, he's got nasty stuff, okay, and he doesn't have any control problems. He's just going to cost money. But this guy will be a heck of a lot less expensive than a guy like Edwin Diaz, who's probably going to cost $100 million as a closer, right? So just something to keep in mind. And he, these guys provide great value. And again, if you get bed in Soto, you don't have to fork up a ton of profit because there's, I mean, a ton of problem. Um, salary because the guys are going through arbitration still okay so that's something to keep me at the fork up uh, prospect capital yes player capital most definitely but that the yankees have plenty of that okay and they're also looking to move some guys so they could put something together for either one of these guys but if they want to just get play pay money rafael montero is the guy i think i'd be looking for I'd be targeting next up is Adam Frazier, who's an infielder and an outfielder. He plays multiple positions. He's with the Seattle Mariners uh, this past year for the postseason. Again, this is a guy, if you if you paid attention to Oswaldo Cabrera, he struggled quite a bit in the postseason, even towards the end of the season, where pitchers started you know, picking him apart and exposing him as a rookie, right? He's unexperienced things, and there are things that he needs to work at. They were preying on him with two strikes and throwing him stuff wildly out of the plate to watch him chase it, and they knew he would do that, so they kept preying on him. So that's a growing... Uh, piece for him to work on, okay? And the same goes for Oswald Peraza. So Adam Frazier, to me, plays infield and the outfield, okay? He's a left-handed hitter who also throws uh, throws righty, but he's a solid contact hitter. He can run the bases. He plays good defense as well. And the Yankees need more contact hitting, period. And this guy, is, he's played in the postseason. He's been known for getting some big hits and coming through for the teams that he's played for. <clears throat> And he's a guy that I think would cost not much. He's 30 years old. Wouldn't cost a ton of money, but he would give them, give them some valuable versatility in the infield if they want to uh, move Oswald, Oswaldo Cabrera somewhere, you know, somewhere else in the field or whatnot. But this is a guy that can, again, play multiple positions. And I think they'll move on from Marwin Gonzalez for this guy. He's, a, he's an upgrade over Marwin Gonzalez rather significantly. So he's a guy I would be targeting too, okay? Um, and lastly would be Carlos Rodon. This guy is, I mean, he... You know, if, if Jacob DeGrom is going to cost 30 plus million. Verland, if he opts out, is going to cost 30 plus million. Rodon will probably still cost, I mean, upwards of 25 or something like that, but he's younger and they could probably get him on a couple year deal. So maybe a three or four year deal, four, or four years for 100 million or something like that with an opt out again. Um, and again, the Yankees need another power arm in the starting rotation one way or another. Carlos Rodon is, me, to me, the guy to get. I mean, the better value here. Um, in free agency has been with the starting pitching has been in the free agency this year. We haven't really heard yet about, I mean, with the exception of Corbin Burns, who is where I'm hearing from the Brewers is frustrated at the extension talks and he might ask to be traded. That's the case. Different story. Yankees have to fork up a ton of prospects for that guy, as would anybody. But Rodon is a free agent, okay? And again, he, he's going to just cost money. He's shown, and he's also a gamer, and the Yankees need that more bulldog mentality all across this team. They got a couple of bulldogs in the rotation, but they need him everywhere else as well. But he's also a pitcher, so he would really, really put some beef into that starting rotation one way or another, which they could use. But these are the three guys I would target if Judge comes back. I think these are probably the easiest gets if Judge comes back, okay? Now, let's go to three to avoid. 
Okay, number one, Edwin Diaz, because of the cost. Okay, he's going to cost 90 to 100 million minimum. Okay, no doubt about it. So I expect Uncle Steve to probably try to get him back to keep him in keep him in Queens. Okay, which is totally fine. We have enough beef in the bullpen, but I would rather add one of those other guys who I think can have a greater impact on this Yankee bullpen than a guy like Edwin Diaz. I mean, they have a bunch of guys already, but you know, with Mario Nacho come back, you got Michael King. Um, you have a bunch of other folks as well. Lucas Slicky, you have Wandy Peralta, you've got Clay Holmes. Uh, Steven Riding is supposed to come back a big arm. There's, there's plenty of guys. But if you add a Montero or a Soto on a pen, or if you add two of those guys, the Yankees would be in really, really good position, particularly with Efros out and losing um, <clears throat> Chapman, Britton, Rafael Montero. Uh, Rafael Montero? No, Rafael Castro. Um, yeah, Castro. Uh, uh, who else? And they're losing somebody else. Somebody else they're losing. Uh, I don't remember. But those are the three main guys that are going out in the bullpen. So... These guys, I think, are, are, are good value for this team. So I would avoid Edwin Diaz if I could. You know, he's a sexy name, he, but he's had control issues over the years as well. He's had a monster year this year, but I would avoid him. I would avoid him. Uh, next up is Jacob DeGrom for the same reasons, but with the other reason that he can't stay healthy. I mean, he's going to cost $35, $40 million, and he plays maybe half a season. You get out of worldly production out of him, but again, not being able to stay healthy hurts, and the Yankees need more reliable guys in the starting rotation, in the bullpen, all across the board, okay? It's the pitching on both sides that kind of kept this team afloat throughout this year. The, the hitting is what's failed them, okay? Runners in scoring position, contact hitting. That's why I mentioned Adam Frazier and guys like this, okay? Um, but this guy, DeGrom, I, I love him, but he just can't stay healthy, so I would avoid him as well, okay? And lastly, Xander Bogarts. I just don't think he'd be a good fit here. Um... He can be a good fit probably in the National League at this point. And uh, he's one of these guys I'm worried about coming from the Red Sox to the Yankees. And uh, I think he's going to get moved anyway. And I, and I expect the Red Sox to probably target Carlos Correa. Um, but uh, we'll see. But these are the three guys I would avoid. Okay? Um, you let me know what you think. Give me your feedback in the comments. And you already, you already know what to do so you don't, you don't miss part two. I don't want you to miss it. And I have a lot more stuff coming out. So, But have a great week, everybody. I'll keep recapping the World Series games. The Phillies and the Astros are tied one-to-one. -one. They're heading back to Philly now for three. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun starting tonight. So talk to you later, gang. Over and out.